Um, I had a stand-up show called The Other Guy, uh, which was, you know, loosely based on uh, events that had happened to me. Um, and so uh, I got a call from Aquarius Films. They said, we, you know, we know you're doing this show. It's, it's won an award and it's sold out all around the country and stuff. And do you want to turn it into... Have you thought about turning it into a TV series? And I've always wanted to do a TV series. Always. It's like I've tried and failed like a few times in the lead up to this over like the 10 years that I've been sort of acting and stuff. And, um, and you know, we, we all got together in a room and developed this series and took it to Stan and Stan, um, like, said, yeah, let's do this. And then it all started. On stage, I guess I was, it was, you know... There's uh, more people. I mean, there's a lot more idea. people <laughs> that I tell you what in actually making a show it's 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 so much different to stand up because stand up it's like it's just me I make whatever decisions I want and if if uh, if it fails then I wear that um, but all of a sudden when you you know you're working on a show with 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 a team of people and you you know everyone everyone can pull you up earlier and go hey you know rethink this this isn't gonna mm. work um, or, you know, we, we think it should go this way. So it's more of a team effort and, and it ends up making such a better product, mm. I gotta say. I auditioned for it like, uh, I don't know, I was maybe one of 20 girls? I don't know how it goes. There was a casting director who was attached to the project, Kirsty McGregor, who's, um, who have gone for a couple of things with before and we have a great rapport and apparently she was sent the script and said, oh, well, this is Harriet, right? Did you, yeah. write, did you write it with Harriet <laughs> She literally in mind? said, that, did, you, did you write this for Harriet? I said, I've never met Harriet before. <laughs> like, I, you know, I'm Fuck not right. of her, but I'd never met her before. And Chris was like, well, she, that's, it's her. Yeah, it was kind <laughs> of, it, it just felt like a nice fit. When I read it, I thought, oh, this is the closest voice to my own that I've ever um, had the opportunity to audition for. So it wasn't a far departure from... I mean, I'm more moderate than Stevie, but just in terms of how I conduct myself, I think mm. it's in my in my own kind of discourse and lexicon. I, I, I'm a bit more. I'm from Townsville. I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> that might say it. I'm pretty laid back. We're both Queenslanders. I think there's yeah. a nice connection through that. that. Becky Lucas is a Queenslander who oh, co-wrote it with sense. the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I think maybe that's. I've never thought about that, but no, there no, is. A, there's quite a Queensland connection here. Angie Field is in que from Queensland Townie. as well. So is yeah. Casey the director? <laughs> yeah, it's so... actually a little bit of a Maroons <laughs> fest. Wow. Yes. But yeah, I just auditioned for it and and kind of as you do after an audition, forgot about it for a while. And and when my agent called and said, they've offered you the role of Stevie, I, it kind of broke up. I thought he said Sally or something. And I was like, oh, that's cool. I don't know what that is. And it's like, no, Stevie, that one you went for a few weeks ago. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And so then I punched the sky as you do when you get a job. And then waited to meet Matt and do rehearsals and stuff, but, but the, it just came on like that. There was never anyone else, like, you know, <laughs> it just was so... Harry, this was the first um, audition tape that we watched, out of the, all of them, out of any character that we were casting or anything, <laughs> and uh, it was just like, oh, this is, this is her. It was just incredible. I, I, would, I would watch Harriet's audition tape this is going to sound really creepy. <laughs> Before I went would, to bed? I, I would watch Harriet's audition tape just because it would get me excited about it, you know? Oh. Mm. So it was like, I just, <laughs> just drinks by myself on a Sunday watching Harriet's audition tape. <laughs> Your girlfriend's like, what the fuck, man? <laughs> yeah, come to bed. I'm like, no, I'm watching tapes. <laughs> but really it did because it just inspired me and it excited me and it just, and it just made me think, all right, this is, this is it, you know? This is the start of the whole the whole you know, journey. That's fun. I think I got a feel for the script when I read it though, because it was, Stan gives you the opportunity to tell stories with characters that are a lot more closer to life because they're not trying to sell Holden's in the break. They mm. don't have to please everyone from four years old to 94 years old. Mm. They just have to please people that have paid the money and want to be uh, a member of, to a, of, of a subscription that has so much stuff. And that's the beauty of Stan and the the future of television, I think, is that there's going to be a lot more stories to choose from and, and therefore writers like Matt and Becky can create these characters that are a lot more kind of risky because they're closer to real people. You don't, you don't really... It's hard to get that past 
on a major network because people are unlikable and and you have to like the people on network television otherwise you get too many letters from old people going yeah. oh we didn't want to make a light <laughs> show no we didn't want to make a light show we wanted to make a real show yeah and uh and that and, uh, you know and even early on in development that we'd have meetings where um you know rob from santa be like all right so you if you want to, if you want them to do this you know then then do it but do it properly. Don't skirt around it. You know, if they're doing drugs in the scene, don't don't allude to it or whatever. Like it's okay, you can do them, but do it. You know, because you can do it here. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> obviously fake drugs, but um, <laughs> filming. But uh, but you know, yeah, it was it was like let's let's be real about this show, and I wanted to make a really honest show. I wanted to make a uh, very distinctly Australian show. It was weird. When we were developing it early, um, I kept trying to think about how it would relate internationally. Right. And then I saw, then I watched Train Spotting again randomly. And you know what? And I was like, man, this is so Scottish. Mm -hmm. And like the language and everything is so Scottish. And they're not trying to make. And you know, a show that's going to be suitable for an American network or whatever. It's just like, you know, that they, they wanted to make something that was honest to them and the people around them and stuff. And that's that's how I felt like. I changed a few things after that when I was like, you know what, I should be, I should make, you know, someone like Desi who play, who's like um, Christian Van Buren plays Harriet's character's drug dealer boyfriend and stuff. And I should, you know, he should be, just unique like really really Australian but in a in a modern way not in a how get a cobra course mm. on a hat kind of way in a in a you know western Sydney yeah sort of recognizable modern yeah context. yeah yeah and I really wanted to do that and I'm, and I'm really proud of that and there's also a lot of heart in this show um, you know I know that please like me had a, like had, had a lot of heart as well but um, some of the other ones I feel like compared to this show there, there are real moments where you will you know it's a drama. Hmm. Yeah. And um and and it's definitely not a gag fest and there was a lot of restraint in terms of where to mm. where to put the jokes and where to hold off before you throw your punches in to you know, um to really make sure that they, they, they hit home. And that's that's what I really, really was aiming for. <laughs>